listen to Two Married Lesbians discuss an LGBTQ plus book each month that highlights the queer human condition as they use connection and humor to relate the issues to us as a queer community. She's Anna. And she's Miranda. I am. And we're two married lesbians. We are. And we're all queer here. All right. So I'm super excited to get down to business. Talk about Heartstopper. So, you know, I read this when the first two volumes were already out and then had to wait for the third. And that was frustrating because it was... was Couldn't binge it. Couldn't binge it. And this started out as a webcomic. Interesting. And is now in graphic novel form Mm -hmm. and has grown very popular and will soon be on Netflix. Oh, my goodness. Which is exciting. But it's live action, though. So there's Live action? Yeah. I almost said live humans. Live humans. <laughs> humans alive. are alive. <laughs> They're not. Most of the time. I just meant they wasn't going to be like cartoon or anything. Okay. Um, Less so, fluffy. Right. So I want to jump into the uh, Publishers Weekly recommends this title for ages 12 and up. Okay. Kirkus Review mirrors that age range. But it is our belief that parents always have the final say on what is appropriate for their child. I, I would agree with that. And we hope that the parents... Uh, aren't homophobic and right. prevent their children from watching this. Right. Well, well, watching. Well, I hadn't seen the show. No, no, me no previews. It hasn't existed yet. It hasn't so. existed yet. But no. the books, I think, are are well um, are well done, and I love the the colors and the the graphics. And she does both. She's the writer and the illustrator. Writer. And so the that brings us to our our lovely author Alice Oseman. Okay. Um, I found this online. While promoting her young adult book, Loveless, she opened up about being a romantic asexual. Interesting. And Osman uses she, they pronouns. Very cool. Very so cool. Try, try to use Love to hear it. Yes, love to hear it. So very, very awesome. It, it always means a lot more when the, the writer is, you know, coming from that place of authenticity that they are themselves a member of the fam, right? Oh, Absolutely. Definitely. Or have had experience and can write from their own experience. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. true. So I just want to jump into some of the notes that I took when I was reading volume one. Um, let's talk about the Ben thing. Because that, okay. that, that's the our ben opening thing. scene. Mm-hmm. As you how, did, s- how did you feel about that opening scene? Well, you know, it really brought up some issues of me thinking about just sometimes, you know, Charlie's with Ben. They, they make out every so often. Ben, we later learn, is dating a girl, so he's he's open about that, and he hasn't come out. So it just makes me think, you know, if if LGBTQ, or which we use queer interchangeably, but mm-hmm. if queer kids... In our household, we yes, do. Yes, in our household, we do. But if queer kids, because this is young adult, are dating someone just to date someone, so that mm-hmm. they're not alone, or if they're dating the wrong person and feel like they might not be able to find anybody else. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that totally. I know when I first came out... The first girl that I dated, I was like, wow, I'm just so lucky I found a, a woman that wanted to date me. I should just be thankful for this. And it was not the right thing to be thankful for. You know, Absolutely agree. I almost married the first girl I dated, so Ooh, seriously. Glad yeah. you didn't. Yes, because now I'm with you. you but you <laughs> didn't. That was... But I think, too, and I had those moments, and maybe I didn't directly think... This is all I'm going to ever have. But mm-hmm. I think subconsciously you're like, well, I should be happy because I'm I'm dating someone. I, I'm not alone. I'm, I have they're somebody. They're a great person and I'm really attracted to them. But that doesn't mean that they're right that for you. That doesn't mean they're right for you. Yeah. You, you could be dating someone that is just the most amazing person. But if they are not the right person for who you are and vice versa, right? Then that's, that's not where you want to be. It's not going to be good for either one of you. No, but also on the Ben thing, because yes. he comes back around, is when he gets pretty forceful, and mm. when Charlie says stop, and I, again, that scene finishes with Nick coming to the rescue, which I just love, mm-hmm. but I kind of was also worried about where that was going to go, because I think it was after school, and it made me kind of wonder if there was going to be something really serious happen, and yeah, because, you know, it had only really, they don't really talked about making out together, mm-hmm. so, so seeing... Nick intervene on behalf of Charlie just because he picks up on that. He yeah, he was really like, stressed. oh, he just, he's, he's upset. He's kind of worried, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to just make sure he's okay. Like, that's really sweet. And, and like, he stayed back and was like, oh, only jumped in when he was like, oh, it doesn't feel like. He's taking stop as a no. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, 
which is so sweet. I love the, the that kind of foil of of Ben and Nick and seeing those different relationships and kind of how they unfold. Because I think you're really right about, um, and I feel like this is a fairly universal thing, that, that issue that you were talking about, about dating someone to date someone. That it doesn't matter if you're LGBTQ, if you're straight. I mean, you know, a or lot of kids go through that. In yeah. the middle. Like, somewhere who knows? in yeah. the middle. It's not full Kinsey zero or six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean, I, I think a lot of people go through that where they just date someone to date someone. And um, there's definitely a lot of validity to being alone over being with the wrong person. And that's not to say that don't date somebody if you're not going to marry them. I mean, sometimes relationships grow and they change and they evolve over time. But don't be in a relationship with somebody that makes you feel less than, you know? When you're coming to a relationship and you're giving your 100% self, and they are too, it's just such a beautiful, wonderful thing. But when you have lowered your self-worth to say, hey, this is the best I can get, a, you're not being good to yourself, but you're also, that's not being fair to that other person either. But I think because Charlie was bullied when he was kind of out it, because he mentions he told mm-hmm. a couple of friends and it mm-hmm. just kind of got out. Yeah. And then the whole school was all over it, that he kind of like, it comes out that he kind of seems like he, that's all he deserves mm-hmm. because he's been through so much at school and it was in a place that he really wanted to be. And yeah, he tells, he tells Nick that Nick that later. And I just think... You know, that opening scene was there for a reason. And I think it mm-hmm. really spoke to me just because, you know, I think he's 14, Nick is 16. And at that age, they're not thinking about getting married. They No, you know, no. They're like, this is fun. Yeah, this is fun. I yeah. make someone to kiss and <laughs> hold hands with as I walk along the beach, which they do later. And I love it. But I think, too, like, that doesn't mean you date the wrong person. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's oh, really absolutely. Key. That's really key. But I also want to talk about the fact where he invites him on the rugby team because he's a really fast runner and he has to, so adorable, show him all of the cute <laughs> um, rugby rules and how yeah. to play it and how to yeah. score goals. And there's kind of some comments made. Does he even, will Charlie even like it because he's gay? Rude. Gays love sports. Gays love sports. Not, yeah. Not this gay. Not, not, the, well, I, I, I like tennis. I'm not a fanatic about any sport. I'll say that. I mean, no, I don't me hate neither. sports. I don't hate me sports. Me neither. I like going to live venues and watching them. No, that's not what I, I like fun. to do. <laughs> what no. do you like to do? do you no, like- I like to play tennis. Okay. Um, I, I don't mind playing a little b-ball, you mm-hmm. know, like in a do you driveway. Call, okay, driveway. I don't call it b-ball. Thank I, you. I, 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 do, yeah. I do not. <laughs> Your street cred would go down. Yeah, I don't have a street cred. <laughs> uh, well, I was trying to. I appreciate you not calling me yeah, out you're on the lack of street cred. Um, soccer is fun, although when we tried to play it with our son, that uh, we, were who, we almost shade. died. Yeah, yes, it was, yes, it was yeah. a bad allergy season. Later, you know, they talk. They kind of address that again, and the coach and the or the co- yeah, the coach and the PE teacher mm-hmm. talks about you know you can't tell if someone's gay or straight from looks. She makes that comment. I love Missy. And she says that they're, those aren't the only two options. Yeah. And I love that, you know, you have a mentor there. You have a teacher. And coach. And a coach that is just saying, hey, guys, uh, there's a little bit more to it than like this black and white thing. You know, you got to consider it. And I mean, I when I, w- um, when I first read it, I was like, oh, my gosh, what what an amazing thing to have to have this this person in your life that you look up to to say hey not only hey this is fine this is good this is normal but also hey there's even more right there's there's let's not get locked into this um i think back about all the different teachers or well i didn't have too many coaches but all the different um teachers and things that i had over the years not one of them ever said anything that remotely resembled gay is fine uh let alone you know expanded upon it so i was just like i love this teacher coach did you get like a a queer vibe i got got a a little bit i I got a queer vibe not stereotypically because she's a coach no just just rooting for her she seems extra cool 
I think I think a lot of people don't realize that cool is a very big part of being queer. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just like that, just just little sheen of cool as they just move through the world. But even as an ally, I think it was important that you had someone mm-hmm. in a position of leadership mm-hmm. as a teacher and coach. Yeah, being able to like say to these guys like, you can't tell if someone's gay or straight. Like point out that that's a fallacy and that's something you shouldn't say. Yeah. And I know we've had conversations before where that, that's that been a comment that has been kind of lobbed at you that you find uncomfortable. That sometimes, like... Um, when I had a different haircut. Right. Yeah. Your, your haircut yeah. now is or very when I, queer. Or when, it's a very queer haircut. Or when I wore traditional makeup all the time. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then straightened my hair and was, you know, more traditional. You know, wore dresses all the time. Yeah. And, how, yeah. How and how people had feel? made comment. Well, yeah, it's not great. It's also like, what does it mean to look queer? Like, you know, do I have to be holding a hand of my girlfriend? Do you have to see us kissing? Like, what does it mean to really look queer? Aside from, you know, having cool colored hair or less femme clothes, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah. it was just very, um, it felt a little demoralizing. Yeah. Like everybody, I, see that. I mean, sexual orientation is different from gender identity and mm-hmm. my gender identity has kind of evolved to like, I don't feel like I need to wear makeup to be mm-hmm. a woman. And, um, also I just didn't like the idea of like painting my face every day. That sounded awful. And it, it sounds awful it, to me too. Yeah, it is. It is awful. But every so often to perk you, up, I will wear mascara. So, you know, you know, I learned something really interesting. Did you know that makeup doesn't taste like anything? Hmm. Hmm. Why would one want to taste it? Well, see, okay, so <laughs> I came out late in life. You know this. You're mm-hmm. aware. You've met me. Well, how old, just, how old were you when you came out? Oh, shoot. Make me do math. Uh, 34? That's a question. 34. 34. It sounds right. It sounds... It's, yes, 34. Anyway, so you were Anyways, licking lipstick off your lips? No, What's going on here? Okay, so I never, like... My first girlfriend that I had, she didn't wear makeup, okay? Second girlfriend that I had wore a lot of makeup. She's very, like, made up, pretty, great, right? I'm like, what if makeup tastes bad? What if I kiss her and it tastes bad? That was a fear. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a taste. Interesting. Your fear was that it would taste bad? Yeah. Did she look better with makeup? I know some people, it helps their self She wouldn't really let me see her without makeup. See, that's a red flag. I mean... Yeah. You shouldn't go to bed with it on. I mean, I'm just assuming I that, would, I, that I, things yeah, happened. But. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's get back on track. <laughs> so, um... We didn't come here for makeup so I talk. love the coach. But um, I also very much identified with the Nick searching online, am I gay? Yes. The answer to that question is, if you gotta ask... It might be maybe. It I mean, might be maybe. Yes or it maybe. It might be a strong maybe. Just an absolute, not 100% straight. If you're asking... No straight person is typing in various versions of, am I gay? Is, is, what if I like girls uh, and boys? That's yeah, another thing yeah, I think he types exactly, in. Exactly, exactly. If you have to ask, you ain't straight. That's just kind of how it goes. Like, I've even met, um, quote unquote, straight women who would be like, oh, I just, I would, I would just love to sleep with a woman once. And I'm like, then you're not straight. If you want to sleep with a woman and like that's something you deeply desire and bring up multiple times, almost every time we talk, it does, you're just not 100% straight. You're just, you know, somewhere, somewhere along the scale. But, you yeah. know. And he also, I think he learns from, from Charlie. He's like, maybe you're bisexual. And then mm-hmm. he starts typing that in mm-hmm. and he... I love how authentic he is to himself. And he kind of says, I'm not sure if that's what I am yet. Mm -hmm. And then he does kind of later come to own that. I think that's Mm -hmm. really sweet. And I love too that it was, it was kind of hit on multiple notes. You don't have to know. You don't have to have a label. You can just be interested in who you're interested in and just live in that moment. And I mean, that's really powerful because as much as I like and enjoy the labels that I am proud to to wear, I also know that that's not everybody's journey. I mean, there are some people that are like, I just don't want any label and that's it. I just like the person I like and they're a human and I'm a human, the end. And that's 
that's beautiful. As long as you have that, that comfort level of knowing who you are and being proud of that, that's awesome. I think labels do help people know who they are, though. Like, I feel like it's almost like like the perfect suit jacket. Like, it okay. fits you, and it, it makes you feel comfortable, and it's it doesn't pull at the shoulders or pull at the elbows, and it just really makes you feel confident yeah. knowing that. Yet, I've also seen a lot of people who have just simply identified as queer. And yeah. whether that meant, you know, you kind of just assumed that they were kind of gender nonconforming or a little genderqueer or whether they were bisexual or pansexual, like it didn't really matter. Like that's just, that was the umbrella term because it mm-hmm. is an umbrella term mm-hmm. that they identified with the most. And for them, that that became a label and an identity. Yeah. That that was their perfect suit jacket. Yeah. So I say that because I have long arms. So it was always hard for me to find suit jackets. So a really good, good to good to know. Yeah. So I just, I love that he searches that. I love that he finds that out. Um, I was unhappy with the ending. Of the, of, the, of the volume one. Yeah. That they kiss and it's this kind of awkward thing and it's like, read more. And you're like, wait, why? They're like, what a cliffhanger. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, like, as the as the reader, you kind of, you've seen both sides, right? You've seen Charlie and you can relate to that anxiety of, oh my gosh, what if I, I, I did this too little, soon? Mm-hmm. I, you know, I pushed the line and he wasn't ready. Um, and I've ruined everything. I've ruined the friendship. I've ruined the what it could potentially be. And then you've also seen enough of Nick that you're like, ooh, um, there's, there's, he's got to be you doing know he something. Wanted, he wanted he this. He wanted this to happen. Yeah. But he just maybe wasn't. I, I got to say, I think some of the most touching moments um, were all the cutesy little glimpses of them each in their respective bedrooms texting back and forth and like not knowing what to text back yeah and oh my gosh that watching bubble three little bubbles pop up and no just way like, come back and disappear yeah, mm-hmm. yeah and you're just like i relate to that so hard i mean i didn't have that as a teenager but coming out later in life it's like kind of having a second you know uh, adolescence and oh gosh that's just that's, brutal that's so many adults <laughs> read young adults still that's true Queer or not it was yeah. just reliving that in a different time you know yeah i think what made me kind of think that maybe you know because they kiss and then charlie does kind of take the lead on that i feel like because he does run into ben again at this party mm. and he tells him you know get off me and leave yeah. me alone and Hit he the kinda, bricks. yeah he, he stands up for himself enough to mm-hmm. make that stand out and make not that he didn't before but it Ben takes it seriously this time. Yeah. So I think that kind of was kind of pumping him up. Yeah. And then he gets alone with Nick again. And then he's just like, I just told off this guy who was like using me, was totally like, you know, emotionally abusive to me. And now I just want to kiss you. You know, a very, very um, lighthearted moment. I loved it. Do you want to talk about volume two now? I, I, I don't think you can wait long between the two. No, you gotta, no. you gotta, I mean, if you were, if you were on it right away and you got volume one when it first came out, you did have to wait yeah, for volume you did. two. Yeah, so like I said, I was grateful I was able to read one and two together. And I don't remember where I heard about this series, but um, well, I think it was popping up in some recommended reading lists of yeah. mine. And I was like, I gotta read this. Well, I didn't hear about this until my, uh, until my wife told me. Yeah, that's true. And I made you read them. I was like, you gotta you, read this. You gotta and read I these. did. Yeah. I did. And then, like, what, a year or so went by? Mm-hmm. Because I read the first two before the third one came out. Yeah, of course. That's the mm-hmm. order in which you read them. <laughs> no, I meant, like, it was right before the third one oh, came right out. Oh, right before, So yeah. it was a little bit after you read them. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, volume two. I loved... Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. We didn't talk about... Surprise lesbian cast member. <laughs> oh, yes. Tara and yeah. her girlfriend. The, yeah. the girl that Nick had kissed when they were like 13. Tara and Darcy, yeah. Tara and Darcy. Yeah. Um, and that he supposedly had a crush on. And yeah. she was like, I don't think he yeah, has the, the, the girl that Charlie's been like, oh my gosh, he's in love with her. Oh, Not Charlie, everything's Nick. over. No, Charlie oh, was Charlie worried thinks that he's, about yeah. Nick. Yeah. Like really loving this Because I think he, they start, I mean, it's almost like, you know, they know something's there, but yeah. they don't really label it for a while. And I, it's yeah. a, it's a really um, 
captivating slow burn. Because I think sometimes yes. with slow burns, you're like, and just get together. But this yes. one, I I loved it. I think I was following along the whole time. And I, I think I that like everything that they had didn't a moment. give us too many obstacles. Right. Because that's what gets frustrating What's about some romance? of the slow burns. Mm-hmm. Is they're like, and here's another obstacle. That's true. I just think I just think everything needed to happen when it happened. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, so I, I did love that we got to meet another, volume two, we got to meet another one of um, Charlie's friends. And then we got to get to know... A trans friend. Yeah. That was a cute... It's like, hey, let's mm-hmm. get some more fam members in here. I loved that. And there's I, like a... A little want, budding room. And I want to admit that I between, like we think. Yes. Yeah. Between uh, Tao and Elle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Tao getting um, kind of kind of fierce with he with got Charlie. pretty fierce uh, for a minute. I was like, "Whoa, Tao, calm down!" And then I was like, "You could see the why, the where he was coming from, right?" And we're like, "He was like, dude, I was the only one on your team. I was the only one sticking up for you. Everything was awful. I mean, it it was bad." And then you're like, "I get it, Tao. I get where you're coming from." And then hearing. Like, you know, seeing that Nick heard all of that, well, a fair amount of it. Um, but who the, puts the, the concessions alley? that close to the bathroom? Uh, agreed. Was that a separate that's issue? A, that's a, that's a separate that's issue. A, pause. Let's address it. <laughs> that, was it bowling alley? It was a bowling alley. Yeah. Now. That bowling alley. <laughs> Should not put a restaurant or rest, you know, the little restroom so close right to the next to the. Yeah. Oh boy, very suspicious. It must have been that we can only run the one water pipe, folks. You're just gonna have to. I don't know. It just made me wonder that. On like a, a separate <laughs> note, <'cause> <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, just I mean, we know, we know, bad, bad stuff can go down. But this is this is the part where he starts to say that he is bisexual. Mm-hmm. And that he owns that. So we see a little bit of that in, in volume one. And it kind of, he fully comes out to Charlie and to himself. Mm-hmm. And then later to his mom at the end of the book. I cried. I did. I, I cried. cried. You so cried? Much. I cried so much. Oh. I cried even the second time. Like I knew it was coming and I knew he was going to come out. And I, I just. Cried. I yeah, cried. Because she was like, well, I kind of wondered. And she she apologizes that she says, you know, I'm sorry if you if you thought you couldn't tell me. I know. I love that part so much. Because that's not everybody's experience. No, it's not. No, it's not. That was such a beautiful parental moment. And I, I absolutely loved it. And a slight humorous moment when she was like, I know what bisexual means. I wasn't born in 1920. <laughs> like, <laughs> I okay. loved that. Okay. All right, mom. She's up with the time. <laughs> I, I love too earlier where she has met Charlie and she's talking to Nick and they have this little moment and she's like, you act more like yourself with Charlie than you do with your other friends. And I was like, that's really beautiful that not only A, she recognized that and saw that in her son, but she brought it up and she was like, this is, this person brings out you, not, you know, this toxic masculinity. Jock um, team members. Yes. I, I did. I'm so glad you brought up that moment because I read that and just kind of paused and then just reread it because I thought it was so beautiful because that's what you want in, in a partner, right? Yeah. What you want in someone that you're dating. Absolutely. That they bring out that best person. Yes. You know, it goes back yes. to what we said earlier about like when you're not with the right person. That's right. I think I'm, we all I'm agree pointing. that Ben was awful. We want to, you know, kick Ben to the curb. We want to, to toss him in a trash can and hurl it over... Maybe not a cliff, because maybe he can learn from this. Mm-hmm. But we didn't care for Ben. No, we don't. He's uh, got some in- serious internal homophobia. Yes. That internalized homophobia is, it It can, it's a doozy. It's a doozy. You can really convince yourself of a lot of things with that. And, um, I mean, it's a, it's a big, big part of what took me so long to come out, too. You know? Um, it's, uh, it does a number on you. Mm-hmm. I uh, I do have to say, though, Charlie's diary of the mouth was so endearing and relatable when he was like, just would just talk and talk and talk to Nick because he just would get so 
nervous and flustered and and uh, everything. It just was adorable. I uh, I really enjoyed it. And then there was that one moment. I believe they're at Charlie's house where he's just like talking, 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 talking. And then I think it's Charlie's talking and then Nick just pulls him closer and they just embrace. And it is, oh gosh, it is just beautiful. I loved it so much. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, they're just so well made for each other. They really are. They really are. And I know, um, you know, it, some people might think, oh, this is really kind of um, stereotypical, like, you know, the, the the emo kid falls in love with the jock. But I, it felt very earnest and sweet and, and kind. And I just really loved it. And I loved getting to live there with them for my time in the book. That I didn't mind that it that it wasn't, you know, something brand new that had never been done. Like, it just, it was beautiful. And I loved it. I, I couldn't agree more. I just think, I think that's why this is so, is so po- this series is so popular. I call it a series because there's four volumes. But this, yeah. their story is so popular. Yeah. Is because they're such relatable characters. Mm-hmm. And then you have that one you know, was outed and kind of forced it out of the closet and had yeah. to just kind of own it and deal with that bullying. And that's not... And a, not wanting that for Nick. Yeah, that's not a great thing. And the oh, fact no. that, you know, because I remember thinking, well, he wants to keep it a secret. And I thought, oh, well, yeah, because he was forced out and that's why yeah. Charlie agrees. Yeah. Because he doesn't want him to go through that. He, yeah, he wants to spare him And that. it doesn't last very long. He, they, he remember they're at that concert and he comes out to, to Tara and her girlfriend and he's like, mm-hmm. I'm not out yet. And they're like, what is it? She's like, how does it feel to tell someone? Yeah. How does it feel to tell someone? And he was like, really great. You know, just that it, like, and it does. It feels yeah. really great to tell someone. It really does. Especially if it's the right person. Mm-hmm. If it's someone that then doesn't accept you, that that's a whole other story. Okay. So I wanted to bring up, and I made a note of this because this specific page I felt like the way the um, the storytelling worked with it being a graphic novel was so impactful. So it's like page 37 in uh, volume two. And it's where Nick is like breaking down and he's having a really hard time talking about how he needs more time. He's not ready to figure it out. out. Mm-hmm. And like watching him literally fracture on the page and yeah. seeing Charlie just kind of give him that space and hold him. I just thought it was so powerful. I just really, really liked it. Yeah, I agree. That was a very impactful moment. Just seeing the the, the captures of that of that emotion. Yeah, and that they they show the emotion. Yeah, it just it's it's like so raw, you know. Speaking of raw emotion, I oh. have to, I have to bring up some of the 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 bad things that uh, happened in this volume. Okay, some bad things. So, they're each um, able to interact with each other's friend groups. Uh, oh, boy. Uh-huh. Oh, you know where this boy. is going. Okay. But Harry has been problematic in the past. Harry and is, he, uh, yeah. What just gets me so mm-hmm. mad is mm-hmm. that he says, you know, one of this group's homophobic. And, and then he goes on to call Charlie the F word. Mm. And I know that the F word isn't as bad in the UK because they t- call cigarettes that. Yeah. But when you're using it as that, I mean, it is bad. When you're using it as a homophobic slur, it's bad. Right. So he says we're not homophobic and then he calls him something that yeah. well, directly, see, that's, you know, that's says old, I am homophobic. That's the old one, two homophobic punch. It's where you're like, I'm not homophobic, proceeds to do something homophobic. Uh, yeah. Gosh, I hated that. But I didn't like that. Nick got so upset that he punched him. I know. I don't I know. think that was. I know. And see, right. and that's. I don't the, think that was right. I agree. But that's that weird time in your life where you're a teenager and, like, if we, you know, travel back in time and somehow we're the same age, and we travel back in time to being teenagers and somebody was doing something to you know, to, to me and, um, you stood up for me and you punched them as a teenager. I'm like, Oh my gosh, 
she did this for me. She's amazing. But then like you fast forward enough in your life and then your frontal lobe de fully develops and you go, whoa, red flag, we need to look at this behavior. So yeah, totally agree. He should have reined it in. He should have used his words. He should have cut him out of his life or said, hey, Walked if away, you can't stop yeah. this, I'm not going to be around you. Something else that was a better choice. But I think it also goes to show like that almost that that plot point almost had to happen mm -hmm. because those have been his friends for so long. And I think that's what was making his journey even harder. Oh, absolutely. That we see him realize that the probably wasn't great. And then he gets hit back. So, cause yeah. of course Harry would just hit back. Oh yeah. Harry's and, a jerk. Mm -hmm. But that's one of those issues. Like he's having trouble dealing with that group of friends. And he mm -hmm. even comments to Charlie later that he doesn't really think any of them. He doesn't have any good friends. Yeah. And so, you know, and Charlie kind of makes light of it. Says, well, he needed a good punching or that kind of thing. So, yeah. but I think he knows it was wrong because Nick is not that person. Well, and it's one of those things that as I read it, I was like, he did this for Charlie. Mm -hmm. And then as I, as we're talking, I'm like, he did this for him too. Yeah. Because I realized that now too. I'm yeah, having the same Yeah. Movie. I'm having the same <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, cause because he's like, he was fighting that, you know, it's he's just... been fighting it inside this whole time. And then also his friends, friends, I'm using quotation marks, who are supposed to have his back. They're, they're his teammates. They're, they're his buddies. And they're blatantly homophobic and saying horrendous things about the LGBTQ community and people in the LGBTQ community. So why on earth would Nick feel safe coming out if those are his friends? So yeah, he absolutely, he did that for him. He did that for Charlie, but it still wasn't the right answer. Right. Felt good in the, in the moment, in right. the book. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but they he, he could have made a different choice. They also mentioned later that there are some, some guys on the team mm -hmm. that... Have in they they talk you know Otis and, and those couple of boys that have kind of noticed if they were flirting or just mm -hmm. rough out, you know it's, it's sports running around on top of each other like it's, yeah we're not sure if this is flirting or this is just showing you how to play rugby <laughs> yeah well to be fair it could be both to be fair yeah yeah um I I will say but I, there, mean, I think there are going to be people that support him because at yeah. the end he does decide he tells Charlie that he wants to come out yes he, so I'm excited I mean I don't know what happens but I'm excited <laughs> to see what happens this is a very bingeable it is such a bingeable yeah. uh, book series. Yeah. Like, um, read it in the morning with a cup of coffee. Read yeah. it in the afternoon with a cup of coffee. Yeah. Read it at night with, probably with a cup of tea. And yeah. just it's, and so lots it's of beverages. Like, it's a beverage-based Leave me based alone. Book. Leave me alone. I want to read this. Yes. So, it's just, it yes. really, it's, it's no surprise when I heard that it was coming to Netflix. I was like, well, of course. Duh. Well, of course. Like, of course. But like, of course. Yes. And um, she's an executive producer on it, and she's a creator on it, and she's a, I think she's also one of the writers. So, it's just like, I'm hoping that... There's even more because I I just love it so much. Okay. And so you're a big, big I'm fan. A big fan. Big well, fan. that's one of the reasons okay. I chose this. Like, I, Oh, you did this choose is, it. You said, yeah, hey, let's do, do this. this. And I said, sounds like a plan. Okay. I got to say, one of my favorite lines, and it was uttered a few times. Why are the straight people like this? Like, mm -hmm. I loved that line. I loved it. Because it's like, yeah, I ask myself that a lot. Right, absolutely. Oh, when he's saying, "Oh, you got a girl on one arm," and oh then yeah, he's talking right, to Tara yeah. and her girlfriend, yeah. and he's like, "Yeah, it like could this. be further from the truth." Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. they were like that. But I also like how Nick and Charlie had that line. They say like, "Why are we like this?" Where they yes. kind of joke yes. about something, and I don't remember the first one was, but I know the second one was, "Are we boyfriends?" And he's like, "We are boyfriends, aren't we?" Like, why yeah. are we like this? <laughs> because they never <laughs> talked about it. it. Yes, and I just well, and that's so indicative of I was gonna say yeah, yeah, of how. Um, the open communication and open talking communication. about things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's good for any any young adult to read this book and yeah. see a healthy relationship You gotta like talk that. about it. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. think too, yeah, you have to be like, are we boyfriends? You have to have that talk. You have to have that talk. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, that's one thing that, um, obviously not every relationship, but in the, the gay male community, that because we have the patriarchy and toxic masculinity as basically 
things that are reinforced by parents, by social groups, by the media, but just everywhere. It's everywhere all the time. It's pervasive, right? That sets men up, whether they're gay, they're straight, they're bi, they're, they're anything, any, anything. But it sets men up to not talk about their emotions, to not talk about their feelings, especially young queer boys who are already trying to hide things that are different because they have a very real fear of how they're going to be treated. Or perceived as even more different. Yes, And yes. when you're young and different, that's already hard. Yeah. You don't I mean, want to be any more we, different. We got a little boy that goes to school with wolf ears on and meows sometimes. Being different's hard. Yeah, it is hard. It is hard. Um, but I think it's, like you said, so important to talk about emotions. Oh, oh, okay. You, I gotta okay. say, I loved, loved the little uh, comic with uh, Tara and Darcy at the end of Volume 2. Did you reread that one? I did not. I forgot that was part Shame. of it. Shame. Oh, Shame. I forgot that was part of it. It is so I cute. thought it was going to be another tease nope. to... Is so it... to refresh okay. your memory, because I, I know be you've another... read it. Yeah, I was going to... I remember it now, but okay. I didn't reread it, because... They got locked in, and this was like before they were dating. I thought it was another tease to Volume 3. Mm-mm. No. It was a cute little cutesy bit. So they got locked in a room. Mm. Uh, they were like both in band or something, right? And they, there's that, oh, I don't like you. Like they're both upset with each other. And one of them's annoyed and the other one is, you know, this whole thing. And uh, they're trapped in this room for hours. And uh, you have like this banter back and forth. Like, why don't you let me? Da, 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 da. And they end up just kind of breaking down whatever it was that was causing that um, rift. And they kind of just have this spark. And I like that's the beginning of their romance. And then the teacher goes, oh, how are y'all locked in here? And lets them out. And Well, that is a good know. lesson to always keep turning the page. Yeah. yeah to make sure there's yeah. there's not bonus material. So that's, I will be rereading right. that. You should. As I well, I, you should. As, absolutely. So I've got, a, I've got a surprise bit I wanted to share with you. Okay, here we go. I thought this was really cool. And I found it in my research. So I found the... Um, original cover because we were talking about how it was originally a web series and then a really interesting fact is initially they self-published the first volume just to get it going and this and this plays very well on a podcast but this is the original artwork for the first volume oh so cute isn't it it's adorable i loved it very cute the most cute the most cute okay And I thought it might be neat to um, also mention there's actually a coloring book, a heart stopper coloring book. That I don't own? That what? you don't own. I know. Now we need to own it. Unbelievable. I know. Well, um, well, shame for the people who have bought me presents in the past. Yes. For all shame. Of them, mm-hmm. All of them shame. <laughs> <laughs> well, just blanket statement. So I, I went ahead. ours were five stars. Ours were, well, okay. I would say five stars. I will say this. I would have loved to have seen a little more diversity um, eth- ethnically, you know, see, see some some additional racial diversity. Uh, I did love that there were multiple different um, sexualities and different uh, gender identities kind of represented. Uh, I did feel like it, it, it did a... A pretty good job there and I loved the bisexual representation because I, I do feel like that's in many cases very often in times yeah absolutely or not taken seriously that's a big one yes for yeah. for bisexual people that it's not you're not really bi you're gay you're on your way to gay town that's yeah, not true it's not true bi, bi town is a thing bi town is you don't a have thing. to go to gay town you ride the, bi- bi- the bicycle, bicycle to, to bi town, town. Mm-hmm. that's absolutely right I mean we the, all know but this but only the bus goes to gay town the only the bus goes to gay town and the U-Haul goes to lesbianville absolutely that's correct I'm, I'm a lesbian but I read a lot of just gay things in general and so I just always find myself in part of that you know, being supportive and trying to understand it if a friend came out. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a big part of why a lot of youth want to read it because they're curious about what does this mean? What is this? Yeah, what does this and look by like? Reading, I've never seen this. And by reading about it, they say less homophobic things and less yes. stereotypical things. Yes. Well, and here here's the deal. Why that's so important 
is because it's not out there enough. Like you walk around every day and heterosexuality is everywhere. It's in ads, it's at the grocery store, it's in a magazine. I guess kids don't read those anymore, but I see them at the grocery store. Um, it's everywhere. It's it's the the standard. It's the norm. Quote unquote, I'm doing all the quotation marks. Yeah, very very perky fingers. Finger yeah. qu- quotey, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the thing is when you're growing up and you're not you're not seeing who you are, or who you're becoming, or who you want to be, or you know whatever, right? If you don't see that reflected out in the world. A, it doesn't feel safe. B, you might not even know it's possible. Because I know when I was really young, and I had I had people asking me if I was gay when I was in elementary school. Like, it's not like it wasn't in the world. I just didn't, I assumed I would know if I were gay. And since I didn't know, quote unquote, I was gay, I guess I'm not. And then also, I didn't see what lesbians looked like or lesbian relationships looked like. I saw gay men. Um, you know, my mom worked with quite a few gay men. So <laughs> if if I were a gay man, I would have been like, gosh, I got it. Done. So I mean, I, I, I feel like we should end on this. Have you seen the trailer for the Netflix show? Yes. You have? Yes. I have not. Okay. Well, shame on you. So I, I know. I feel very ashamed. I haven't seen the trailer but i did look it up online i was looking up the different actors uh to see who was playing whom and i was like maybe it's because i'm old but it feels like charlie and nick should not be the same size well to be fair sometimes actor pictures they look so different than how they do them up with makeup and that's true that's fair I don't say stature, but that doesn't really seem right. I don't yeah. know. Because, I, I mean, they give you all the details of how tall and how old they are. But yeah, I've watched shows and then gone and looked online and be like, that, that's them? Oh, well, so that's, that's who they played. So <laughs> and people look very different. That's true. I just, I I don't know. Um, I'm really excited to kind of see how that plays out. Uh, I'm really excited to see how telling everyone will, will happen in the in the third and fourth. And to see yeah. what other issues will come up. Because I think she, she hits on a lot of things along the way that mm-hmm. you don't always necessarily expect. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested in those little subplots coming coming about. I loved that the author, that they brought up uh, Tara and Darcy a little more mm-hmm. front and center and Tao and Elle a I little more front more and of center them. that they're going to yeah. come back in, um, in in three and four. So that'll be really exciting. So I think next episode, we're going to read over three and then four, and uh, catch back up with everybody. Let them know how we feel. Sounds good. All right. And until then, we're all queer here. All queer here. <laughs>